So a lot of people are predicting that a new 3D Sonic game is going to release at the end of this year featuring Shadow the Hedgehog, due to various leaks and rumors from people like Zippo, as well as various circumstantial evidence such as Sonic Movie 3 which features Shadow heavily releasing at the end of this year, as well as the people behind Sonic the Hedgehog saying in interviews that they're going to do more with Shadow in the future. And not only do I agree with this, but I think there's even more circumstantial evidence of not only this game existing, but what type of game it will be that people are overlooking. And it all stems from interviews and statements made by the developers of Sonic Frontiers before the game came out. When Sonic Frontiers was getting closer to release, the developers in interviews repeatedly stated that Sonic Frontiers would be the new foundation for Sonic the Hedgehog going forward in the same way that Sonic Adventure was and the original Sonic the Hedgehog was when his first game released on the Genesis. Talking about how the open zone format would be the third generation of Sonic the Hedgehog. Now I and many other people disagree with this later of Sonic Frontiers of being the third iteration of Sonic the Hedgehog gameplay, as I think the boost formula introduced in Sonic Rush and later translated to 3D and Sonic Unleashed is a fundamentally different gameplay style in comparison to the previous 3D Sonic titles. But that's not how Sega sees it, as evidenced by the interviews saying that Sonic Frontiers is the third iteration of Sonic gameplay, but also by how they categorized the different types of Sonics in Sonic Generations, with classic Sonic consisting of all of the games up to Sonic Adventure and modern Sonic being adventure onward, despite the gameplay in that game not really being representative of what was available in the early 2000s. But now, despite Sonic Frontiers probably being closer in gameplay to the previous games than the jump from 06 to Unleashed, this is definitively by Sega being coined as the third generation of Sonic the Hedgehog, with them specifically labeling the cyberspace stages of Sonic Frontiers as a traditional 3D Sonic game, and mentioning that they chose to develop Sonic Frontiers Frontiers in the way they did because they felt like there was little room for evolution with a traditional 3D Sonic game such as Sonic Forces, showing that they don't see Sonic Frontiers as an evolution of games like Sonic Forces and Sonic Generations, but rather a complete reimagining of what a Sonic game can be in the same way that they reimagined how Sonic could play for Sonic Adventure. And this wasn't just a one-off comment, this was being mentioned in multiple interviews, clearly indicating that it's a pre-prepared statement to use in interviews used by Sega and Sonic Team, meaning that this distinction that Open Zone Sonic games is a third pillar of Sonic is a deliberately important message for Sega and Sonic Team to get across to their fan base. And their business, their goal is to make money, not to share their opinions on how they categorize Sonic games. I think this categorization has to do with the future development of Sonic games. The last time Sega split up Sonic into two distinct categories to mention to the public was with Sonic Generations splitting classic and modern into two different identities. And since then, we've had classic Sonic games and modern Sonic games, through Sonic Mania and now Sonic Superstars being the continuation of the classic series, while the modern series obviously continues getting games like Sonic Forces and Sonic Frontiers. We also know that through this split, Sega has been very particular about keeping certain Sonic characters exclusive to their designated pillars of Sonic or generations of Sonic or what have you. With characters like Mighty and Ray being relegated to games like Sonic Mania, never to have modern incarnations, not even in the comic books, and with characters like Silver and Shadow never crossing into the classic era, never getting classic designs, not being included in games like Sonic Mania and Sonic Superstars, to the point where they would rather create new characters for those games like the new character introduced in Sonic Superstars Trip. And recently, we haven't been seeing Shadow in any modern Sonic games past Team Sonic Racing. He's not in Dream Team, he's not in Frontiers. So I think this new game featuring Shadow that is rumored to come out at the end of this year is going to be the first new title in what Sega sees as the second generation of Sonic games. And I think this cycle of releasing new first generation, second generation, and third generation Sonic games is going to cycle on a three year basis so that we get annual Sonic releases. Think about it. Last year we got Sonic Superstars, a first generation Sonic game. Before that we got Sonic Frontier, the first third generation Sonic game. And the year before that we got Sonic Colors Ultimate, which would fit into the category of a second generation Sonic game. And I think that is a 
about to loop and repeat again with the release of this new shadow based game. Meaning that this new Sonic game won't be open zone, but rather more similar to games like Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations, and even possibly like the adventure games. And the possibility of that gets me very excited as there's a lot of ideas from earlier 3D Sonic games that got dropped by Sega in future Sonic games that they might be willing to pick up for a pseudo revival of that era of Sonic the Hedgehog. For example, a Chow Garden. Maybe this is why they didn't include it in Sonic Frontiers despite an interview saying that it was the most requested feature in a new Sonic game because they want to save the Chow to be something that is representative of the second generation type Sonic games along with characters like Shadow and I presume Blaze and Silver and other characters introduced in the early 2000s. This would also be a perfect opportunity to go back and revisit the lore of Shadow the Hedgehog that was established in Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes, and Shadow the Hedgehog, especially since the third Sonic movie is going to be about Shadow. A movie is obviously a narrative medium, so they're already dipping back into it there. Why not dip back and expand upon some of those stories in the video games as well? In interviews prior to Sonic Frontier's release, members of Sonic Team were openly talking about how they eventually want to make a Sonic Adventure 3. Maybe this game that might come out at the end of this year is Sonic Adventure 3 and was in development at the time that Sonic Frontiers was wrapping up, hence why it was even mentioned as being a possibility in interviews. All of this might be just wishful thinking and a reality I'm making up in my head because I'm thinking about this stuff so much, but I do genuinely think that the plan is to have these three types of Sonic games that release every three years, resulting in a new mainline Sonic game coming out every year. It's even been said in interviews that Sega's plan with Sonic going forward is to target specific groups of Sonic fans for each release. And with how big the Sonic Adventure 2 fan base is, it wouldn't make sense for these specific groups they are mentioning to only consist of classic Sonic and the most recent iteration of Sonic, as there is a lot of stuff in between and they are well aware of that. Now whether this new game is going to be a boost formula game or closer to something like the Sonic Adventure games is anyone's guess. I could see them going in either direction to be honest. The director of Sonic Frontiers has mentioned mentioned on Twitter that he's interested in creating a game without the boost, but if we are going along with the idea that there are three pillars of Sonic, I would assume that the director of Sonic Frontiers would be working on the open zone third generation Sonic games, while somebody else is tackling the development of this new upcoming Sonic game in the second generation. So I could see the boost not coming back in the next open zone Sonic game. I don't know about this upcoming one. It could still be the boost. They could go back to something closer to Sonic Adventure, since they're probably going to do that for the story, considering that Shadow is going to be a major part of this game. But Shadow did boost in Sonic Forces, so it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for Sonic Team to pair the boost gameplay with a story like Sonic Adventures, especially since they consider Sonic Adventure and games like Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Forces as the same type of traditional 3D Sonic game. It could be some sort of mixture of the two. In Sonic Lost World, they reinvented Sonic's gameplay play drastically and obviously it didn't work out, but it proves that they are willing to experiment with creating a kind of in-between for the boost and adventure gameplay since in Sonic Lost World, the spin dash kind of acted as the boost, but everything else was more slower paced like the adventure games, although it plays like something completely different to both of those styles, but you get the idea. This new Sonic game could play like any Sonic game released between 1999 and 2017. I personally think there's merit in going back to Sonic Hero style gameplay. While I think that game was very unpolished, the concept of switching between three characters to have essentially a massive move set at your fingertips whenever you want was really cool and a direction I would love to see them develop further. They kind of did revisit it with the Avatar, Sonic Tag Team levels, and Sonic Forces. And in Sonic Dream Team, you had a bunch of different characters you could swap to while playing the level. So Sega is clearly willing to do something similar to Sonic Heroes again. If this is a boost styled game, I do think that Sonic Team will include some sort of second play style as in the past, every single 3D Sonic boost game added something extra in order to lengthen the game time due to boost levels being so fast to get through. In Unleashed, we had the wear 
Firehog. In Generations, we had Classic Sonic. In Colors, they split up the levels into multiple acts and extended them slightly, but even then, the game was still really short. And then Sonic Forces obviously had the Avatar and Classic Sonic stages. So if they do another boost game, I think they will definitely have a second slower paced gameplay style to go alongside the boost levels. Maybe Sonic has boost levels and Shadow has adventure style gameplay. That would be the most ideal outcome for me personally. They could get even more creative and add a third gameplay style with Silver, bringing back his gameplay from Sonic 06. In that game, it wasn't very good, but with the fan remake called Project 06 by Chaos X, he was able to adjust the Silver gameplay to make it really fast paced and fun. So I think if Sonic Team took inspiration from that for some Silver gameplay, that could be really cool as well. Although I highly doubt that will happen, especially with this next game, since the focus would ideally be on Shadow. I don't know, there's a lot of different ideas they could go with. So I'd love to hear your ideas for how you hope this new Sonic game will play, as well as the whole idea of this being a new pillar in the Sonic franchise to build off of, kind of like the classic Sonic and modern Sonic that we've had since Sonic Generations. I know not everybody's a fan of the split, but it seems like something that Sega is definitely dedicated to doing, as evidenced by the release of Sonic Superstars, and I genuinely think they are going to continue defining these different iterations of Sonic for us us to enjoy in order for future Sonic releases to be more predictable and exciting for fans of each individual type of Sonic gameplay. So leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.